Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna be working on this uh, portrait style medium keepsake box uh, mini album that comes along with the medium keepsake box. Um, we just finished this one, which is like a landscape that opens, um, you know, whoops. Which way would that be? Up, down, instead of over? <laughs> Something like that. Um, so anyway, we just finished this one, and so we need to work on the other one that we made. So I've got a pretty good idea of what I think I'm going to do on the cover. So I think we're going to make another embellishment for the cover, kind of like we did the love letters, but it's not going to be a love letter. I think we're going to do a, um, a Polaroid style thing. So I'm going to use the We Are Memory Keepers frame punch board to make this. Um, I will link everything I can in the description box below, including the printables to the mini album boxes and all of that to my shop, to any product I use, all of that. I will do the best I can, um, but I need to get my paper trimmer out. And this is a Fiskars uh, Precision Rotary um, paper trimmer. Okay, so here is one of my large cutoff piece scraps. It's that foil paper, which is... The embossed foil stack by die cuts with a view and I bought it at Hobby Lobby and then the paper line I guess I'll show you that again too is love clippings by Prima um, it's really pretty so this is one of my large cutoff pieces and I think um, for the size I think I'll do three wide and three and three-fourths tall so let's do the three and three-fourths first And then three wide. Okay. In the other videos where I've been using this frame punch board, I didn't show you guys how to make a Polaroid picture. So I'm gonna show you now. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these little pieces all the way to these bottom holes so that I can round um, this corner off really quick. So it does that, really sweet, simple. So I'm just gonna round all four corners. Didn't hardly feel like it was cutting through there. Just like that. And then I want to move this. I'm gonna have a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna have a quarter of an inch border going along this side, top, and this side. So I'm going to move that to the uh, quarter of an inch spot here on this side of the board. And then I'm going to punch one of the top holes like that. Then I'm going to punch the other top hole. So now we got that. So in order to get this bottom piece right, I think, um, should we do three-fourths? What would that be? Um, I can't decide. No, I think we should do an inch. Let's do an inch. So I'm going to leave this piece here at quarter of an inch, and then I'm going to put this piece at one inch. So then I'm going to slide it in to make sure that the quarter of an inch side is up next to the quarter of an inch rail there. Then I'm going to punch. So I did an inch. That looks pretty good. Okay, in order to get this side to do the same, we need to flip it this way. And stick it in, and again, make sure that the quarter of an inch side is butted up to the quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to punch. So now we've got that. Looks like that. Okay, so then the next thing we want to do is, so I'm going to leave this bar at a quarter of an inch. I'm going to slide this under here, the quarter of an inch part. And remember my little tip, where you angle your blade and, and angle it up next to that rail and then put that notch in and then slide and then you will get a perfect cut every time. Can you see that? There's nothing hanging off there. All right, so then I'm gonna turn it, make this slice. Whoops. Since I can't get over top of it, it's harder to see. Okay, so then I'm gonna flip it this way I'm, I haven't cut this bottom one yet because I need to move the rail. Butt it up, stick it in there, and uh-oh, something didn't sound right. There we go. It was just dragging a little bit. Okay, so then for the bottom one, we need to move that rail. So I'm going to move it 
all the way back to one inch, just like that. Did I put that on there wrong? I don't think so. And we're gonna slide that in. Let me flip it up and double check. And then we're going to, whoops, put that in and slide. So now we should have the perfect little Polaroid frame. That looks cute, doesn't it? Okay, and then we've also got this leftover piece too. So I'm thinking, right, I'm thinking it'll be like that and we pop it up a little bit. Anyway, I've got a good idea of what I wanna do. So now I'm gonna ink all those edges. This is Ranger Archival Ink in Jet Black, but you can use whatever black ink you have or want to use. So now I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put some foam tape on there. This is just a 3M foam tape. I will link this below. This is a gigantic row and I've had it forever and it just doesn't seem to be like going anywhere. <laughs> it's like I can't seem to use it. So this is obviously gonna be too thick. It's a half an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut, I'm gonna try to measure a little bit here. I'm just gonna cut a piece off and then I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm shaky today, I swear. I had too much coffee, I guess. So I'm just, these are Tim Holtz tonic scissors. Um, stuff doesn't stick to them, which is why I like them. So I'm gonna set one of those pieces aside. And then I'm gonna take that piece that I just cut in half and I'm gonna cut it in half again. Cause we really need a really fine, I wanna be able to slip something um, behind there. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so now we got these two pieces. So I'm gonna put another piece, aside, put that piece aside. I stick it to my travel <laughs> so I don't lose it. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on three sides. Just like that, and I'm gonna flip it over, trim it off. And for this piece, um, this little cutoff here, I'm just gonna sit it right down here in the middle, I think just to have a place for whatever we stick in there to have a stopping point. Okay, so then I'm gonna take this other piece and put it down the side there. Trim it off. Whoops, you might wanna press it down first. Okay, and then I'll put this piece right here. So then I need one more piece, and this piece, it doesn't have to be that skinny, so I'm just gonna use that half that I made and put it down here at the bottom. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that there, and I think I'm gonna wrap some seam binding around. So before we move on, let me get some of this stuff out of the way here. I wanted to look for a card that'll fit down in there. Um, or a scrap or something. That would be cute, but the word won't fit. Oh, happy day. Together forever. Let me look in, let me look in the paper collection and see if there's any cutoff pieces that might look good. Truly, madly, deeply. That's kind of cute. Oh, happy day. Just ride. <laughs> Bird cage, bingo. Um, I want it kind of like a, is that the only one? What about in this piece? I want it to be a little bit contrasting to the cover so it stands out a little bit, you know? I wonder if I got any scraps that are darker. It's gotta be big enough. The hearts might be cute. Cause it's just really a, kind of gonna be like for a template for um, somebody to trace around their own picture to sit in there, you know? Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. And then maybe later I can like put a sticker or something. So I'm just gonna measure the opening here. So this measures approximately two and three fourths by three. So I'm gonna cut it to 
a little shy of two and three fourths, and then I'm going to cut it to three. Get my paper trimmer back out. Let's see, two and three fourths. Let's just go a little shy of that. So it should fit in here perfect, and it does. Can you see that? Perfect, perfect fit. So it'll look like that. I'm definitely gonna have to put like a sticker or something there. So I'm gonna ink these edges up real quick. So this is where we're at. I'll obviously slide this in after I touch it down. So it kind of looks like that. And then, let's see if I can find a sticker. Of course, I got stickers, two sticker sheets. Jeez. Um, Maybe I won't put a sticker on here. It says us. Might be kind of cute. Maybe I'll wait. I think I like that to be there, but I know, I think I've got, I want to put, I think, I know what I want to do. I want to put a butterfly and a wood embellishment. So let me just hold off on the sticker for now. So I think what I'm going to do is I want to put a um, seam binding closure. So I've got this crinkled seam binding already. Um, all I do is get it wet and put it in a Ziploc bag and squeeze it um, and just twist and twist and twist until there's you know no air left um, and then leave it like that and it gets this beautiful crinkled because normally it looks like this. It's just flat, which is cool too by itself. And this color is, this is Hug Snug seam binding and it is rose, um, psh, I can't make that out, but that's the name of the color that I'm using. So, um, I'm going to take me a piece off and I think I'm just going to wrap it around and tie it on the side. So I'm just going to cut, I'm going to cut a piece. I've, this is just recycling packaging from jewelry that you get at the store from like little charms and things. I just cut it, notch it, and put a slit in there and it holds my seam binding, my crinkled seam binding, just fine. So my thought is wrap it around, tie it in a bow, and then I have this fun idea for little dangles. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna attach this seam binding down in the middle with just a little bit of score tape. Um, it'll hold it just fine. And then we'll put the thing over top of it, the um, Polaroid that we made over top of it. This is just Sue Quain score tape. I'm just going to try to find the middle here. You could use Fabri-Tac. The only reason I'm using score tape is because it's not, it won't be as visible through when, because if you take this out, you'll obviously see the back, you'll see the seam binding. So I'm just going to take the backing off here, maybe. All right, let me test this again. Okay, that looks about right. So I'm just going to lay this on here and hope that I get it in the middle. I'm gonna try to keep it flat on the cover there. So then it will tie on the side. I don't know if I did a very good job, but it's harder to do stuff on camera, you know? So then this right here will go over top like that. So that's where we're at right now. So the next thing I want to do is I found, let me grab them. I found all these wood um, embellishments. There's some keys. These were at Michael's, their recollection. It just says mixed media on the back of it. So you get three of each thing. So here's some keys, and then there's some pretty intricate hearts that I might use. There's some clocks, super cute. And then I found these two love 
ones. This one has like a key, a heart key, which is cute. And then there's this cursive one. There's three in each package of this. So what I thought I would do, would put this right there. I know it's hard for you to see because of the, there's a little bit of a glare from the paper. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to embellish that a little bit. This love piece here. I'm gonna grab a sheet of paper. And I'm just gonna take regular O gesso. This has been depotted. I put it in another pot and it's been in here forever and it's kind of dried up a little bit. But we're going with it. I'm just gonna get some dirty water, apparently. <laughs> I haven't changed that water. And so all I'm gonna do is just kind of hit it around the edges and maybe a little bit on top, just depending on how crazy I get here. Can you see what I'm doing? I guess I shouldn't have picked a white piece of paper. Let me find a black one. There you go, now you can see a little bit better. Plus I need to. It's just jazzing it up a little bit. Giving it a little more something. A little more something something. Yeah, I like it. See, it looks pretty good. So we went from that brown color, you know, and just added a little something, something to it, and it looks good. Okay. So I think we're going to do that. This is just regular old gesso, cheap old gesso you get. You can get at Walmart or anywhere or Liquitex or Hobby Lobby or any supply store or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just use whatever gesso you have. It doesn't have to be fancy. So then I'm thinking something like that. Yep. I like it. And then, um, again, I separated all. I even pulled some more flowers out of their packages because I need it. I still need flatter flowers for the smaller one. So, but I think I'm not going to use the flowers on top. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use just a butterfly and keep it simple on the top because I still have some little dangles that I want to make over here. So, this is one of the butterflies that came, that didn't come with the collection, but it's part of the collection. Um, it's super sweet. I haven't used it yet in anything. Uh-oh, this one's, let me get the other one. Can't separate the, there it is. There we go. So, I think I'm going to do the same thing with the gesso. And I just put my thing back in the water, my brush. So I'm just going to go along the edges, just kind of swiping them just a little bit. So now it looks like that. I don't know if it's going to focus very well. It looks kind of bright in my viewfinder. Can you see it? It's hard to see, isn't it? Where's the uh, other one at? Maybe if I had the other one next to it, you might be able to tell the difference. So it kind of lightens it up and brightens it up and kind of shabbies it up a little bit. I think it looks really cool. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna stick that, oh, I better wait till it's dry. Okay, so now I'm just, I think I'm gonna start just putting this together, putting this little album together. Um, I'm gonna leave it tied for now. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the backing off of this foam tape. Okay, and then I think I'm going to uh, put it at an angle like that. So we're just going to have to go with it, you know. So I'm going to stick that there, and then that goes in here. Just like that. So that's cute. That's cute all by itself, isn't it? So then I think I'm going to stick this like here. Something like that. So maybe the little us sticker would be really cute right there in the corner. So let me grab it. And I'm going to ink it up with the black, just like, whoa. Just like I always do the stickers. I can't hardly take it. So I'm just going to stick it in this corner like this. And hopefully, hopefully that'll show under here. 
So I'm gonna slide this in here. Whoop. I'm gonna have to press that back down now. It got caught up on the, on the, uh, what's that called? Seam binding. So it looks like that now. So then I'm thinking this goes here. And I don't really care that it says us. I just wanted that pop of color underneath there. I like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the love down uh, with Fabri-Tac by Beacon, my favorite go-to. And I think I'm just gonna put the glue on the heart. Um, we'll see. This is my favorite glue, but you use your favorite glue. So you don't have to use what I use. It's just my favorite. I'm gonna put it on little spots. Cause if, I feel like you could use it for anything, everything. So I do want to do this at an angle. So first get it down cause there's glue on that heart. Kind of like that. And then let me move this. Oh goodness. I don't want to get glue on the thing. All right. So now I'm going to glue the butterfly down. I'm just going to put glue on the middle part here. I'm gonna too far down. I'm gonna tack it down right there. So it kind of looks like that. So cute. All right, I'm gonna let that dry, and then when I come back, we'll start working on these little charms here. Okay, so there's what we got so far, which is super cute. I mean, I like this. I mean, you put a picture there, I think it would just be beautiful. So I wanted to make little charms that dangle off the side here. So I found, I was searching around Hobby Lobby the other day and I found these little vials like this in the jewelry department. Can you see it? And then these are from the company Blank Slate by Traditions, or this is Traditions, Blank Slate. And you get, it says 16 pieces. I don't think you get 16 bottles. You might, I don't know. Um, but it comes with a little corker, corker, a cork stop, and the bottle itself. So I think I'm gonna make two of them. So I'm, my idea is like little, you know, like message in a bottle kind of situation. And then I found these tiny little, I hope you can see it. Let me see if I can separate one out. Oops. Come on, focus. It says love. Do you see it? These teeny tiny little boogers. This is also blank slate. So I'm going to get one of these out. So I think that would be cute inside the bottle. So I mean it's super, super little. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm thinking about putting one of these in the bottle. Maybe even just by itself. I don't know. Um, but then I also got from Blank Slate, I got these, these are little glass beads. Let me see what they're called. So Blank Slate 3mm faceted glass stones. So I got them in clear and in black, but I don't know if I'm gonna use the black. Um, I think it might be a little too, uh. And then I also got this tiny little heart sequence. Um, it probably won't focus on that. It's just tiny, tiny little heart sequence. So I might use that, but then I've also got my sequence, my rose gold sequence from the Rosie Bell collection that I used in the other one. So I might add some of that in there. I don't know, I just haven't decided yet. Whoa. I think the one that has the love in it, maybe I'll do some of these glass beads. Not too many. It doesn't take much to fill them up. Oh, I'm dropping them everywhere. They're so tiny. Whoa. <laughs> Jen, quit flipping it over. I think it's so cute. I want to be able to move it around. So I like that. I wonder if I should add um, one of these little sequins in there just to give it a little something. That's cute. You see, 
You probably can't. It's so tiny. I like it. So I think I'm going to leave that one like that because I want to be able to see that love. And then this one. Um, let's try putting a few more of the sequins in there. But this brand, um, they go on sale quite often. So um, check it out. Like the little package, uh, there was four, pe four loves in that package. And it's $4.99, but if you get it 50% off, you know, that's pretty good. It's $2.50. And they're just cute little charms. So I'm going to leave that one like that too, I think. So let me put my lids on here. Okay, so since these are glass bottles, um, they're just so cute. I like them. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get, I think I'm going to use my score tape, my eighth of an inch score tape, I think. I'm not 100% sure if I'm wanting to do this this way or not. But I think I'm just going to wrap it around a little bit, around the bottle head, because I'm going to tie it, I'm going to tie the uh, seam binding to it. Or maybe I should just use glue. Let's try just using glue. And see what happens. I'll use glue in just a second. So I'm going to untie this real quick. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the seam binding and I'm going to make myself a loop here. And then I'm going to stick the bottle in there. And I'm going to try to keep the bottle towards the end of the seam binding here. And then I'm going to pull it tight, just like that. And then I'm, before I make another knot, I'm going to do this other one. I need to make sure that it'll still tie. So again, I'm going to make a loop. Whoa. Run away seam binding. And I'm going to put the bottle in here. And if you wanted to, you could have glued that cork down to the bottle. Whoops. I swear. Everything always goes weird when you're recording. Okay. Try this again. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep it down to the end of the seam binding here. Just like that. Okay, now let's see if we can tie our bow. We can. So now we have these cute little bottle dangles on the side of our, our mini album. Isn't that cute? I just think it adds a little something, something, a little fun, little extra touch. And then if I, I just put, I'm just going to put a little dab of glue instead of making it a knot. I'm just going to put a little dab of glue there and I think that's, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, so I think we're going to just leave the covers and the little binding and the little charms. I think we'll just leave it like this. And in the next video, we'll go on the inside and do all the inside embellishing of the pages. Uh, so if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I will be sure to leave everything in the description box below, for my templates and for all the products that I can find that I used. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and click right here. Um, and then check out these other videos. And please be sure to let me know what you think in the description box below. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.